Welcome back, guys. Kibla Ahmed Art and G Man in London. <laughs> Finally, he's together. gone. He's gone. He's gone past the COVID stage, so now he's uh, allowed out and about. Uh, so he's at my house now. Uh, but I hope you guys are well. It's episode one four one. We're drinking tea and eating brioche buns, uh, and just chilling. It's a nice Sunday afternoon. We're just relaxing. Went for a walk. <laughs> But uh, yeah, finally, G Man in the UK uh, for a bit longer than expected now. Uh, loads of shit have been shit's been going on. But uh, guys, massive thank you to everybody who's been following us on SoundCloud, showing us love there. And the guys on YouTube, you guys have always supported. I know there's only a couple of you, but we love you to bits because it means the world that you guys are continuously watching this. There are going to be a few changes coming up soon, but that's going to be phase by phase change. Uh, but yeah, for the moment, what can I say? It was the last time, <clears throat> which number was the last one that we used to, done it together? It's been a year and a half for sure. About a year and a half, that was episode 60 or 70 or something like that maybe? No, no, let's do the math bro. Do the math. 52 weeks is in a year, and then half of that is 25, doing like 70 episodes ago. Eh, you might be right. Well, yeah. no. What are we on, 140? 141. 141, so maybe around 80. Yeah, about 80. Yeah, about 80. I was almost close. Oh, I was wow. almost close. But yeah. Uh, it's been a while. It's good to be home. It's good to come out, check out the... The... the, uh, the what is this? This is like... Another geek. Um, geek what, pad? What do you call geek? it, man? I don't really... <coughs> I haven't even finding. given it a name. It's just my office, bro. Oh. I work here now. This is my work here. I'm just saying, on mum's house, we've got the geek cave. My place in Singapore, we got another... What are you called? Sanctrum? Not Sanctrums. Yeah, Sanctrums. Headquarter, another headquarter. Fortress of Solitude. I come here to chill, relax, take Understood. your mind off things. <clears throat> we got your own one. It's good to come to your own. Yeah. It's still like, I, I don't know. You guys have seen the progress in the videos anyway. The ladder's still there, right behind me. But we've got some two new bookshelves. Got some places to put my art supplies. Wifey's art supplies. A couple of pops. I'm going to get the posters up next now. We're trying to find something decent. Got my lightsaber up. So I'll do a little tour. But if you follow us on Instagram, you'll see it on there. Kibla Ahmed Art for Instagram. Gilman187 on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, guys, let's start off with... Actually, you know what? Let's see what, what, what's been happening in the world recently, past COVID. Uh, we will talk about uh, Wonder Woman 1984. So these guys came around last night, got to watch it. So we got to enjoy that. Uh, but let's go on to my page. Kibla Ahmed Art on Facebook usually has all my geeky stuff on there. So it's not just my artwork. Anything to do with the geeky world, movies and comics will be up on there as well. Oh man, flux capacitor. Mm, nice. I do like a lemon tea, man. Uh, I'm gonna go back a week, but you know what? Let's let's talk because I I gave my spoiler my my non-spoiler review of Wonder Woman 1984. You spoiled shit out of it on this one. Uh, yes. So warnings, guys. Spoilers tell you now if you want to see a non-spoiler review it's already on my page i can link it at the end of this video but or in the description but check it out uh Gima, what was your thoughts uh enjoyable enjoyable it was definitely fun to watch a comic book movie first of all it's been a while mm. it's been at least about a year or something right um mm -hmm. so that was first of all enjoyable and it was just <clears throat> you know wonder woman has a, it was brighter mm. you know so it had a bit more of a a brighter, funner feel. Chris Pine brings a lot of um, uh, charismatic attitude towards it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Pedro Pascal is just awesome now. I mean, listen, he's been awesome since uh, I was gonna say Nando's, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Narcos. <laughs> since Narcos, but Mandalorian. Considering you don't even see his face, he's the man after that. But he he brings a good element to it, and uh, it was a fun movie, man. It was a fun, great comic book movie, man. And you know, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman is. She's so hot, bro. She's, she's good. So she's good. good for the part. She works uh, she it really does, well. Nah, she does good. I think she takes it very serious. Yeah. And uh, fun movie, man. I mean, not not <clears throat> the best comic book movie in the world, but just a great fun uh, Wonder Woman movie. I kind of like every time I, I see it now, I kind of want to see. The thing is, I do want to see a little Superman or Clark Kent or a Bruce Wayne reference, but I have to remember this was 1984 in this. In the timeline, yeah, that's right. Bruce is probably a kid. Clark's probably crashed somewhere. Um, but because of the whole um, DC universe, 
you know, it's kind of moist to know that, oh, Wonder Woman's having a little adventure, but you know the other guys are out there. I kind of love it. Yeah, you know, Aquaman's exactly. Out there somewhere. I kind of, again, it was moist that uh, the, the movie was great. Um, I just want to see more crossovers because you get to know her personality individually in these mm. movies. So I want to see her now in a new Justice League movie. So I'm looking forward to judge to um, to uh, Zack Snyder's uncut version. Hopefully, it's like a new movie. I want to see her interacting with the cat. It just it just gives it a bit more, you know. Now you're gonna you you, you see her back in those movies. Mm. It's like oh cool, we know her personality from these movies that we just came out. That's right. You kind of look at it different now. Um, but overall, it was, it was good. Listen, I, I don't I can't say to you I follow Wonder Woman, so I don't know the origins of her too much i don't know the origins of che- origins of cheetah um but this had you know again spoiler alerts but this was about that mystical stone it could grant wishes and whatnot and that's how cheetah became cheetah and and all the other stuff happened um but it was it was it was a great stunning sort of movie man no it looked good action. Yeah. yeah the way she flew she took flight today i mean not today in the movie she took flight um that was awesome the way she was using the lasso a mm. lot she used the lasso that was a primary, primary. That's weapon. primary weapon now. I mean, yeah. you see it in the comic books, yeah, and they didn't show it much in the first one because they showed more of her tactical skills, the way she fought, the way she bust through windows, and that's the one epic thing about the first one which I enjoyed was that the their action scenes were, it showed her strength and her power, what she stood for. This one it showed her mystical powers of the side of things. So making the, 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 the jet invisible. Yeah. Uh, and I love the fact that Chris Pine's character is the fish out of the water now, where he plays her character that she was in the first one, where she just loved everything about the world yeah. and what she enjoyed, like food and, and what was going around, but then the pain that comes with it as well. Uh, listen, man, movie making in, in, in this type of scale... Like, don't get me wrong, like all the movies we've seen so far, we've seen them on the big screen. And lucky enough, before this country went into lockdown again, I got to see it on the big screen. And I genuinely enjoyed it. That scene when she start, starts to fly, bro, and Hans Zimmer's score kicks in and you're like, this is moist. You know, you get really stuck into the to the moment and it's hard to watch it on the TV with little Lara running around or somebody eating crisp very loud or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the flight no I can imagine it on the big screen that must have been moist I've again I've heard that Hans Zimmer soundtrack before I can't remember where though he, he's sound- used it from yeah, on something else definitely, definitely. I've, I've definitely he's definitely used that. it on something but else the fact at the end when they used the BBS soundtrack what's mm. it called I wonder A Beautiful Life A Beautiful Life now that soundtrack is an epic soundtrack I love that soundtrack the, found, the, the fact that he used it again Mm. It went, man. It went. I, I, I didn't. For one, I mean, yes, I clocked. I was like, oh my god, use the BBS soundtrack, but it didn't feel like, oh, you stole it. It just felt like, oh man, this goes so well. Yeah. It's so moist, and it did remind me of BBS, and yeah. it did remind me that they're in this universe together. That's um, right. You know, Hans Zimmer's music definitely has an impact. That soundtrack's so great. Such a soundtrack. Such a good soundtrack. I love it. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, good I film. Think, Listen, yeah, overall, good year, film. It's just a good fun film. For this year, considering we haven't got anything, you have, fucking this is a great movie. Like you have to appreciate what we did get. Yeah, exactly. Because we exactly. didn't get shit this year, man. Disney have been, you know, smart and a bit stubborn and they pushed everything back. They're like, no, we're not going to do the streaming shit. They're going to keep... I mean, they are doing streaming shit, but their movies, their blockbuster movies, they're keeping it blockbuster. <coughs> but um, in cinema and whatnot. But, um, I feel like Warner Brothers should have waited. I think so too, because I wanted to see that in cinema. Don't get me wrong, I know we, we, we watch it on HBO Max. And... Um, that was cool, but I'm a cinema guy. I would love to have seen that in cinema, to be honest mm. with you. Um, so, yes, the streaming world is something, but I think there's, I don't know, I think there's a difference when you make a TV program and a movie. Not that I know anything about making a TV program and a movie, but what I'm saying is, like, there's something that seems different. When you're go- watching a TV program, I'm expecting eight episodes, 45 minutes, you know? When, you ex- when it's a movie... You know, it's it's a movie. But then it's you put a budget experience. like Mandalorian together, bro. That's that's more than movie budgets. It is, but the format of the show was almost like uh, it was a show. Yeah. You know, there was an episode like you, it was a, a beginning and an end of an episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the movie is a continuous thing for two hours. Now. That's right. I would have loved to see Wonder Woman if I was, if anything on the big screen. Now, if I head back to Singapore or London, opens up a bit. 
uh, within the next month of Titan Cinema, I definitely want to go again. Yeah. Uh, because I want to experience it on the big screen. Um, but uh, overall, I mean, fun movie, man. I, you know, great DC Universe movie. I want to see more from the DC Universe. I want to see more Superman and Shazams and, you know, I know Batman's coming out. Well, that's not in the universe, but... No, it was fun, man. It's fun. I think Gal Gadot's a brilliant Wonder Woman. I hope they don't change her. I hope she carries on playing Wonder Woman. Um, and they carry on just creating, you know, putting her in more movies and crossovers and whatnot. You know? Same here. Definitely, without a doubt. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where they take the story arc. And she did say that if Patty Jenkins uh, signs up to do a number three, she'll join in as well. But they need to be clever with their script writing now because, you know, number threes are always hard to kind of... I don't know. The, the third maybe movie is always bring in Aquaman or something that you know. Now yeah. maybe it's time to just to bring in more characters. Yeah, yeah. that you can't like listen. If, if if number three is gonna be like modern times or something, then yeah, you bring in you, you bring in someone else. Bring why not? You might as well. Like you've got you've got the universe. Marvel's doing it constantly. I'm not saying copy Marvel, but just do it. Mm. No, of course. Talk. And I mean now they've made all their stuff canon TV and the rest of it. So I think you should give it a go. But no, absolutely fun, fun, you know, delightful wonderful movie to watch i know a lot of people listen uh, this is just my opinion anyway yeah because you've seen on my channel whether i like it or don't like it i still give credit to the hard work that goes into it and uh, movies are about to get is about getting lost in the moment i don't need to know why this happens and that happens and plot holes and i i've got to live life after that movie so if i can just get away for two and a half hours I'm happy, you know what I mean? I've got my own potholes and shit to deal with in my own life. I don't need to try and work out a movie pot pothole, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, people have lost the... There's a reason why we pick up a comic book. You know, you pick up a book and you get lost in it. You don't need to know too much about the characters, but if you know the basics of them, you can connect with them with that basic thing and kind of move on. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I don't want to be stuck later on trying to lose sleep for three days understanding how the stone worked yeah it depends on the movie as well it depends what you're expecting and all that sort of stuff listen we were talking about um tenant tenant the other day mm. brilliant movie but the, i get it when people say i didn't like it because it's so confusing you just lose interest you're like i can't bother to follow this i don't know what the hell's going on yeah and i get that part like when i watched it i was so invested in it that um, I just enjoyed it for what it was and I still didn't really understand everything and I was like, I'm going to go again, I'm going to go again, I'm going to go again. But I never got the uh, motivation to go watch it again. I was like, ah, can I go through that again? I can't bother. A few of our mates would be like, ah, not feeling it, film's pants. Mm. Right, but just because it's too confusing. I get that. I can never mm. say to them, no, nah, you, you don't know what you're talking about because I don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the movie. I get some of the concept, but there's a lot of it I don't get. So I get it. Um, but no, with these comic book movies, again, I just, I, I mean... Depends, bro, man. I don't, you know, everything doesn't need to make 100% sense. No, of course uh, not. Like in games, you know, people pick, can pick and choose, and, you know, you got, you know, there's so much science behind it. I mean, even Neil deGrasse Tyson who got on it and done a little end games breakdown on how, you know, some of the science is bullshit and whatnot. But again, he enjoyed the movie. He's just talking about how it is. The thing is, like, as a fan, yeah. bro, that's the best comic book movie ever. I don't care if they got the science wrong. Who cares? I don't, freaking future and, and back in time and whatnot. What do I know about anything about that? Exactly. You know, I'm trying to be an expert yeah. on going quantum physics. Quantum physics and, and, physics yeah. and shit. Yeah, nah, we don't need that, man. We have saying that NASA have, uh, what was it? I've got it on I it. Breaking news, it. man. Scientists have achieved long distance quantum teleportation for the first time. Interesting link is in my Facebook page, guys. Go check it out. Uh, but yeah, let's move on from Wonder Woman. Guys, if you get the chance to watch it, download check it, it, check it out. It does come out officially to download on the January, on, on the January, you know, <laughs> <laughs> January 15th, 2021. So you'll be able to download it in the UK and watch it. Uh, I am going to move on to the next subject, which was pretty fun, pretty cool. And, and a flashback. And you know what? That's the one thing that Wonder Woman did was nostalgic. You know, we grew up in that era. That was our yeah, era. Yeah. You know what I mean? They bring back something from that era again, which is well, not DC or Warner Brothers, but Paramount and Amazon Prime give us the coming to America trailer. What did you think, bro? Bro, <clears throat> I know people were like, it's risky because I come into America is such a classic movie. Mm. 
Eddie Murphy was in his prime of comedy back then. That's bro. right. His humor was just fucking. Bro, this trailer, I, I tell you what, I watched it, mm. and then at, right at the end, when they got to the barber shop and you heard the jokes, I was like, oh my god, this is a joke. Because they, they, his humor was still dark. Because, you know, they were calling him Kunta Kente and whatnot. <laughs> and then um, the guy goes, um, the two Af- African kids with flies on their face. And they're like, oh, no, nah, no, nah, you went too far. <laughs> that was hilarious because you, you can tell the t- type of humor that he's going to bring into this movie. That's right. holding back. Yeah, that's yeah, a no. fucked up piece of humor <laughs> right there. Right? <coughs> but he's using it in the movie. And I was like, okay, cool. He's not holding back. Yeah. They're going in. And so I'm thinking this is going to be hilarious, bro. I no. hope it's going to be hilarious. Trailer looked good. And he's still got it, bro. All those characters that he played from back then, he <laughs> still got it, man. Yeah. It's Eddie Murphy, man. Look, listen, I know he went off Wales a little bit. Not oh, Wales, but he just went on a different path. Didn't That's he? right. Come off the dark humour and entertain kids and whatnot. But if he wanted to go back to it, man, he could do it. And I hope Netflix pay him all the money in the world to do a fucking Netflix special. Because to see Eddie Murphy come back and do... Something. Live comedy. He must have something. He must have jokes, bro. He he must do. So anyway, that end of that trailer cracked me up, and I think yes, this is the humor that we're looking for. And mm. you know, there's not. I don't think. I hope he's not going to be holding back. Back thinking, you know, whole cancel culture bullshit. If I say this joke, they might cancel me. Fuck that. Eddie Murphy's been through it all, man. Exactly. I say Eddie Murphy. It sounds like he's going. He's going to be using a lot of dark humor in this. So I hope he does. Um, so I don't know That's my thoughts I, I can't wait actually What do you think? No I'm looking forward to, uh, to it too I was he, That actually last bit In the barbershop Made me laugh Because those are the characters That connect with you Because That's what happens In in barbershops Some barbershops Anyway Some barbershops Have next drama uh, But it was that That part When as soon as he said that You know they were giving him Different names and shit And as soon as he said Oh the, the two kids With the flies on their face And I was like Oh shit and the barber was like, that's deep, just get off the chair. Yeah, okay, you went too far. We don't you went too far. <laughs> but, then in the, but then the next scene, he calls him Hotel Rwanda. And mm. I was like, she's gone too far. Again, this is the dark humour that I'm talking about. Exactly. That we need in this movie, or we need Eddie Murphy to express himself in his humour. Exactly. If he held back, like I said, because he's worried about something, that's what will flop the movie. Mm. But if it, it sounds like they're going deep with comedy, and that's, that's what we need. That's what we need Eddie Murphy to do. Um, Which is a look, man. It does. It doesn't bother me too too much. I know dark humor can really get to people, offend people in different ways. Remember, this is just a guy and his jokes and his opinions and the way he sees the world. And then that's why it is at the end of the day. Some of this yeah. stuff that comes out is the way people see the world. So you have to remember as well. Like, yes, some people might get offended. Just you know, and it's mm. offensive. Just say, God forbid, like for someone from Hotel Rwanda, that situation saw mm. it, they'll get offended. I get that they were in there. I remember one of Joe Rogan's podcasts, and he had a guy called Daryl Davis on. Mm. I think I told you about yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, black dude, he's a musician, but then he's been able through his journey and whatnot, he's been able to convert like over two hundred KKK and Nazi members to give in their roles. That's right? right. Yeah. Anyway, so in that conversation, it came up about Dave Chappelle and uh, Clayton Bigsby, right? The the, the black white supremacists and whatnot. Now that Daryl Davis was. He first of all said, he goes, Chappelle is a genius. He is a genius and he's a comedic genius because he goes, listen, I've been to a Klan rally and it is not funny. So he gave Chappelle the credit of humor and all that stuff and he's a genius. But he goes, I've been there personally and that's not funny. Mm. Uh, it is fucked up what they do and how, you know, about, you know. So depending on your experience, you're going to be like, that's fucked up because you might have experienced it and whatnot. But as long as you can appreciate, at the end of the day, it's a joke. That's what it's all about. It's what humor is all about. It's of just, course, you know of I mean? course. That's joke. exactly what you, the main thing. You might thing. get offended because you, you you personally experienced it, but it's not a personal attack. It's just a joke on, on the situation. That's it. Um, that's right. That's right. But yeah, Eddie Murphy, man. Fucking genius. So then Net- Netflix needs to give him that Netflix money and do a show. Do it. Do it. Quick as... We need another delirious or a raw man. Yeah, to man. this day, they still stand still and they're so funny, man. It's absolutely awesome. Fucking hilarious. Did we Absolute. ever talk about Chappelle and that little 20 minute. Um, no, we didn't. That, no. Uh, what was it called again? So we both saw it. It was Unforgiven. Unforgiven. Uh, the, you before. know, all these show, all these places, all these streaming services started putting up his stuff without his permission. But it's in the contract. He did sign it. Uh, they can use it. So he was boycotting his own stuff. What a genius. Interesting guy, man. He Interesting literally guy. kind of exposed the industry 
Darren Dan. Yeah. yeah, he does something that no one else done. He exposed the industry and just how he got fucked over. But again, he knew he was young and he, you know even the people he trusted told him to sign a contract. Exactly. But but they didn't think nobody ever thinks how big something could get. You know what I mean? That's it. But he what, what I loved about and the thing is for for the love of Dave Chappelle, I've actually stopped watching the Chappelle show. Even though I'm so you know, we grew up with that. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen, bro. But for the love of him, I'm 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 gonna support Chappelle. And if he's saying boycott his own show, I'm gonna boycott it, man. But I'm hoping Netflix, because Netflix took it down straight away because they love Ch- well, I don't know. Yeah. They took it down. I hope they give him the money to say, listen, make a new show. Here's the money. Do you own to him? Come on, come on, do it, bro. And I know Charlie Murphy's not around, and that's you know, rest in peace. But maybe use Eddie Murphy, get quick, um um um, what's his name, man? He's a comedian. Um. Uh, Ashley Larry. Ashley Larry, yeah, he's definitely gonna be a He's on Things podcast a lot, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's on there a few yeah. times. Don't know yeah. one or one, yeah. one, or, one, or, one yeah. or Um <laughs> Why have I forgot his name, man? Who's a little Chris who's a little guy, man? The funniest guy in the world right now. Kevin Hart. Kevin bloody Hart, mm. bloody Hart. I think I uh, please just give Chappelle all the money. I think Netflix are, you know. I, I seriously think they're telling him, make your own show. He can't even call it Chappelle show because them other idiots stole his name. But Bastard. He can. I think. I think Netflix honestly are gonna pay him to make a sh- another show. I hope they do. I, think I they hope do. they do because they'll break the internet again, aren't they? They will, man. I think for the fact that they took his show down because he'd asked them to. Yeah. And he was like, "I fuck with Netflix. That's why I fuck with them. I reckon they're gonna pay him to make a new Chappelle show, but call it something else." That would be good. That would be, be definitely good. Definitely good without that. Uh, I don't know. Was there anything else? Well, that's it, bro. Any Marvel news? Nothing? No, nothing. Wonder Vision comes out next month. We've got Cobra Kai coming out next month. Next week, bro. Cobra Kai on Friday. <sighs> oh, yeah, shit. New Cobra Kai, day, man. Bro, yeah. you should pop by and we should binge the shit out of that. Yes, I'm on that. Definitely on that, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah well, and, and I'm going to be here for Wonder Vision. Looks like I'm stuck here for a little bit. My yeah. Flights and, and, and approvals to Singapore has been cancelled. Um, I mean, COVID has been a difficult one, I've got to say, for a lot of people. And this has like, come to a point now where this country is basic well it, they definitely didn't handle it well man nah. again but you know the one thing about singapore what i'm because what a lot of people are saying is like oh because when the covid shit happened not just singapore but a lot of countries traveled ban uh, uh, ban travel and whatnot mm. and then singapore got this routine in place a really good routine in place where you come from certain countries and then they put you in quarantine for 14 days in a hotel. You literally get off the plane mm. and they direct you onto a bus which takes you to a hotel and you quarantine there for 14 days and then you're allowed in the country and whatnot, mm. right? So what I'm saying is like, I know there's a new strain that's come out and right now they've stopped people traveling to the UK. Yeah. I just yeah. hope like, they've, you've just, you've learned so much in the last eight months. You set up this whole routine. Don't just turn around and say, oh yeah, we're just banning all travel because like you, you know what to do. You've set up a routine. You've learned so much in the last eight months. Don't act like you haven't learned anything. It would be a shame if they, you know, stop me from going back for months and months and months. And, and like, I'm like, why are you not implementing anything you learned in the last eight months? That's you know what right. I mean, you sh- you you already put together a great system for allowing people to come in and out of the country with this fourteen day quarantine. Just because a new strain happened, don't go back to the beginning. Like you don't know what you're doing. Mm. Just follow a new process implement some new things and follow a new process so I'm just a little bit concerned on um, me not being able to go back for months and months I'm just hoping Singapore you know have learnt from the last eight months have learnt with the new process that they put in place and then they start letting us back in Um, because it's good that I'm stuck out here with family it's not an issue but if it goes over a certain period of time it's going to start causing problems to work and tax and all that sort of shit but um, anyway anyway I am stuck here I'm supposed to leave on January the 11th. Looks like I'm not going to be leaving until maybe, I don't know, in the in the Jan or something like that. But should be all right. It should be all right. Fingers crossed. Singapore. It will. It will. Keep, will implement. Will work. Will learn what they have learned. Implement what you've learned in the last eight months. Don't be silly and just lock everything off again. No, no, of course. I think that that they'll get it sorted definitely without that. Uh. So while we're on here. Uh, we can we can talk about some new changes that are going to happen to the channel, guys. There is going to be my main focus because my job, I just started a new job in September, so I wasn't able to give 100% to the channels. Uh, but I'm going to only focus on 
YouTube for the next couple of months. I'm not going to be doing much Instagram or anything like that. Uh, I want to I, I want to see if I can boost this channel up a little bit more. So quality is going to change. We're going to have some new equipment up in the place soon. Uh, hopefully, I mean Gilman's going to be here anyway, so we're going to do the podcast with Gilman. Hey, lose any Corona spits? That wasn't me, bro. That was a Corona hey, spit. Like, this is our last show of 2020, bro. Oh shit! I forgot to even say uh, festive greetings festive to everybody yeah. yeah. that you know celebrate Christmas. And I hope you guys had a really good time and ate loads of good food. I know we did. It was good to be together with the family after this sh- shit shitstorm of the year. Uh, highlights of the year? Any highlights? Uh, yeah, I've still got some. But what was I talking about, man? Quality of videos. Let's talk quality, about... Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, remember YouTube highlights. Quality. Yeah, YouTube quality of video. Yeah, so how about highlights of the year. We'll, we'll, we'll go. Shit, last video of the year, guys. Highlight. We'll talk about highlights. 2020 highlights and movies and geekiness and just mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Uh, highlights, 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 20. Okay, so I know once Gilman goes back to Hong Kong, he'll probably get the stuff that I'm going to get anyway. Singapore. Shit, Singapore. Uh, he'll grab it. So mic, camera, and headphones. So we're going to change the quality up a bit so everything sounds better and looks better. There is going to be some other major changes as well, so I'll keep you posted. G-Man, you got to take... Actually, I'll tell you after. I don't even have to tell it. What am I explaining to this, to you guys? You don't need to need to hear this. You guys need to be surprised when you see the channel. You'll be like, oh, shit, he's got new stuff. That's what you need to be. But, yeah, let's talk about highlights. 2020. Uh, let's start. Where do I start from, bro? 2020, bro. What's, uh, just think back throughout the year, man. Um, you know what? <clears throat> My highlight for the year is... Was able to get bring mum and dad down to Singapore. Yep. Take them out to you know enjoy Singapore for their what was it their fortieth anniversary. Yeah, forty. And take them to Langkawi, Malaysia. Just beautiful sights. Just something they've never experienced before. So I was happy they done that. The timing was impeccable because mm-hmm. it was a week before everything shut down. It was during the Corona starts. That's right. So everyone wasn't traveling much. So we had everything to ourselves. And as soon as they left. Is when everything went to lockdown, and you know, they, they you know they had the perfect trip and perfect timing. One week later, their trip would have been completely destroyed. Um, mm. So that was amazing. Um, that was one of my highlights. Getting back home was a highlight, even mm. though you know there's problems getting back to Singapore, but coming home has definitely been a highlight of the year. Um, and you know, if we've learned a lot this year, a little, little appreciation and whatnot, of surviving COVID. Listen, we got it. Me and the family got it. So, you know, surviving that and getting through it without much worries was, was I want to say a highlight, but, you know, positive thing. Uh, we've learned a lot to appreciate things this year. Um, and, you know, there's, there's been, like, it's been a negative year in the energy, it has, of, the, it, the energy of the world and but, people. <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, we're trying to keep it positive. I've had my moments. Trust me, I've had my moments in Singapore when I was getting depressed by myself. Ramadan came in, I couldn't sleep well. Mm. I had my moments this year as well. But I've been cool, man. Everything's been yeah. good. Family's been there. Met this chick out there. She's cool. Um, you know, see how that goes. Um, yeah, man. Everything's been, you know, it's been, it's been, we're moving forward. And the vaccine came out. That's positive news, you know, the fastest vaccine ever. You know, whether you believe. Funding, it. guys, funding, funding. People always ask how they do this. Some places take 10 years to do things. Funding, people have been pushing money into this like crazy. Yeah, Governments have been pushing money. You know what I mean? Shit. So I know everybody has their own opinions about it, but, you know, if we can get the world back to normal in some way, I doubt the government, well, I don't know, try and pump us with shit we don't know, bro. There's can you imagine agendas, that? But I don't think they're trying to kill billions of people. Let's be real. <laughs> they need money. They need people to rule. Exactly. They want to yeah. rule us. So, yeah. yes, whatever you believe the vaccine might have, maybe, but maybe not. Right? That's what I'm going to say. Right? Um, but, man, I, I can't wait, to be honest, because they'll give us all the vaccine and say, hey, let's slowly get back into into life. Um, so, yeah. No, of course. And of course. then TV shows-wise, it's definitely Mando for me, or even... Yeah cinema and movie and all that sort of stuff 100% I think Mando is, is the one for me this year hmm. um, brought my love back for Star Wars I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan ever but I'm a, I'm a fucking huge Mando fan hmm. um, uh, great great end finale of the show uh, what else what else is there this, this year bro what else are we uh, Disney that's all that Disney gave us right 
Um, what else came out? I forgot to say, we saw Soul the other day as well, Soul, which was really yeah, good as well. And I love yeah. Pixar movies. I am going to watch it again because we watched it while everybody was screaming and shouting in the house. But there is one thing to take away from that movie, and I'm kind of glad Disney kind of... I think that's why Disney... I know they were waiting for cinema, and I would have loved to have seen that on the big screen as well. But you take something important away from it and what it was saying, and in the time that we've had in 2020, to exactly enjoy every moment and everything you can is, is so important at this time at the moment now. Because me... With that, the, my, my highlight of 2020 is having time with Alara. As a father, knowing what my dad went through and looking at other dads, what they went through after their kids were born and not having enough time with them, miss moments. I have been lucky to not miss that. Her walking, her talking, her saying her first words, uh, learning with her. I'm learning with her, you know what I mean? Walking with her, chilling with her, playing with her. I don't get, nobody gets that time. You know, when your <coughs> both parents are, are working full time, uh, you miss these moments. You don't get those chances. But, you know, that's the blessing I got from 2020. Awesome. Yeah. That's, uh, awesome. that's a think, massive highlight. Yeah, I think so, Soul relates to that. I think yeah. that's a good, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's just, it, the movie was great. It's just saying that you don't have to have one purpose in life. Yes, yeah. you have whatever you got to do, but your passion or whatever it is, but don't forget about everything else. There's mm. so much more to life than your just than your one purpose. That's, exactly. You know what I mean? You focus so narrow minded on your one thing, which is not a bad thing. That's a great thing, whatever that thing is. But just don't forget about the little things around. Um, you appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, little things, just honestly. human interaction and you know stuff Duh. like that. Everything you know. It it's was so a great movie. And, and it's Jamie Fox, you know. Yeah, he's brilliant. He, yeah, I mean, yeah, he was brilliant. He's a brilliant person for it, and and. Our Pixar movies are just so touching, man. They're exactly. so great. Yeah, love Very it. heartwarming and touching. they brought it out on Disney+, Plus. no streaming costs, no trying to charge people. It was just there. That's, I that think they was. needed to, man, in a way, because like every review I've read so far and people that have seen it so far, I highly recommend it because of that, bro. Little Christmas because present. Because of what is a Christmas present, but it was because of 2020 has been... It's been hard on everybody. Whatever you see on Instagram and Twitter, you know... Life is not perfect, but the little things, like for me, you know, this little guy here, a Funko Pop, which probably didn't even cost 10 quid to make, can give you so much joy, you know. My highlights this year, massive shout out to Funko Pop Europe, you guys are absolutely amazing. I got to feature my artwork, my artwork got featured on their channels, uh, DC Comics, big shout out to you guys, Warner Brothers UK. Uh, Universal, because I got to see a couple of movies with Universal, The Lighthouse and The Hunt, which I saw early this year. Got to meet Margot Robbie and the crew of Birds of Prey. Uh, Shout-outs to The Geek is Still, because he ha has helped my blogging world dramatically by uh, getting to know him, chilling with him. Uh, again, another brother from another mother. Massive shout-outs to you, uh, no, loads of people to thank, man. Friends, family, G-Man, you know, he, another highlight for him to come this year. I know it's been a tough one for all of us and not being able to be together has probably been the hardest part. So that's one part. Uh, what else was there, man? Oh, my first Christmas as you guys back. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Years. Six years, man. Yeah, that's a, so a long time. A long it's been time. nice to just be with the family. I mean, especially the, my last two years in Singapore were just fucking lonely. I was literally mm. by myself. So this year has been good. But yeah, you know, I mean, regardless, like, the amount of the, what you just listed out, considering the year, the shutdown of the year, is, 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 man, what you just listed out is something that someone, I, could, I haven't even achieved in, in, in this, you know what I mean? Like those, you know, so. See, look, right. Little things, they're all little things, but they all come together as one big thing. But Alara, the, my first book with her in it, uh, that's my greatest achievement, I think. That's something that I, I leave back with her forever. Uh, mm -hmm. she'll always have that with her uh, and she can I don't even want to think about when she has kids and they go on and legacy man legacy guys you leave a piece of you behind you know if back in the days people could do that why why can't we do the same thing it's all about that I think not for other people but people that are close to you your loved ones if you can leave a piece of you behind for them that's what it is because every time she looks at that book she'll remember that whatever happens to me you know god forbid anything but 
you know, she has a part of me with her now. So, and I'm going to do more. Uh, next year, I've still got my list. Remember, guys, notebook, iPad, list on the wall. Put it down, write it down. And you work two minutes, five minutes a day on it. And then visualize it. And it will come together. Yep. Hard work, man. Hard work pays off. Um, yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm excited for... I'm not going to say, oh, 2021 is going to be the year. Because I don't believe in that. I shit. stopped doing that a long time ago. <clears throat> I stopped doing that year, New Year shit a long time ago. <laughs> it's just about... I don't have nothing I want to specifically achieve within 2021. I just have goals that I want to achieve within whenever they're achievable for me. Uh, I'm going to work towards them. Uh, I still do want to compete once. still want to do one more MMA fight. You know, um, I do want to do a bit more traveling. I still want to go to tra Thailand and travel a bit. You know, Japan, China, the Shaolin Temple. There are loads of places I want to travel. Mini goals that I want to accomplish. And then, you know, I'm on my journey on the way back home anyway to the UK. Um, I've got a couple of other goals that I'm trying to achieve, <coughs> which will take at least another year or two. Um, career goals, financial goals, but those are long-term ones anyway. But yeah, man, I mean, look, the New Year's coming. A lot of people do do New Year's resolutions, so mm. you know, do them if, you, if you're into that stuff and try to keep to them if you're into that stuff. If you want to be like, hey, 2021 is going to be awesome, you know, from next next Friday, if, things, if you think in your head that from next Friday, everything's going to be awesome, you know what, think that. Um, I, I just think differently. I'm just like, it's just another day, another year, another month. It's going to just carry on. But, you know, it should be a good year. Exactly. I, I think after six months, once the vaccines can be distributed to everyone, you know, I think the first six months going to be distributing the vaccine, and the last six months will be recovery, mm. and then recovery and try and get back to normal. That's right. 2021. But, I think yeah, we're gonna see, we're gonna see a lot. We're gonna learn a lot, and um, hey man, hopefully we get a whole lot of geeky shit coming out next year. Marvel should be killing it, man. Think about it, man. We got Cobra Kai next week, right? If we don't binge binge it, maybe we could take our time to January fifteenth. Then we got One Division. Mm -hmm. Then every week we have something until March. That's like eight episodes, right? So we have something till March, and then something else should come out. Come on, man. We got shit to watch every week. I can't wait. No, nah, it's good. It's, it's going to be good times <coughs> ahead. Good times ahead. All right. Cool. Was there anything else? No, that's it, man. Guys, uh, massive thank you on the support on the channel. I know it's been a slow one, 2020. Only because of the new job and a lot of things taking over. Uh, the house as well. We came to a point where yesterday, oh no, the day before, Christmas Eve, uh, I got to finalise it by putting up uh, the blinds. That was the last thing to go up in the, in the front room. Uh, there is a few snags and things to fix up on, but I've completed the house, bro. Furniture. Awesome. Everything's done. There's a few things to go up in the geek room as well, a couple of posters. Um, Yeah, and we're almost there, man. But guys, massive thank you for following our journey. That's the, the main important part of it. The, this was all about the journey. All about the journey. Uh, catch us on SoundCloud. Check out Gilman's Instagram, Gilman187, uh, Kibla Ahmed Art, and want to say a massive thank you. If we, this is the last one, so guys, have a wonderful start to the new year. And uh, Jima? Yeah, yeah, no, same, same, same. Have a good start to the new year. Um, be safe. Don't go out and get too drunk or whatever the COVID restrictions are. Just stick to it uh, and just spend time with the loved ones and welcome in the new year. And just, yeah, man. We'll see you next week. Yeah, that's right. 20. Cool, man. All right. 2021. Yeah. 2021. Someone made a funny meme saying, <clears throat> when you realize next year is called 2021, like in 2021, <laughs> like they won. Uh, it's kind of funny. But anyway, 2021, new year, new start, of new course. hope. That's it. All right, guys. One love. Peace.